Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this week's episode of our Junior VC Behind the Scenes. I'm your host, Mazen, and this week I'm joined by Abhinay and Anpath, and we are going to talk about this week's piece, Can Pale Energize India's Next 20-Year Consumer Explosion? So as we're thinking about which company to write about this week, you know, we came across Pale, and the more we researched on them, the more fascinating the story became. Uh, First of all, it was surprising to me to find out that they are actually the most, Paleji is actually the most sold biscuit in the world. Um, on top of that, it is just an incredible story and we'll, we'll walk you through the whole story. Um, th the story actually starts in, the, in 1929 when Mohanlal Chohan uh, buys this small factory in Ville Pale. Uh, and it's, it's kind of this rundown factory, he has 12 workers and he named uh, the company that he built after the place he was in. So Parley, because he was based in Ville Parley. Uh, and then he starts producing these sweets. Um, you guys have, you probably heard of Orange Bites. You know, they're these little uh, boiled candies that he initially produces in this factory. Uh, and they do this for a few years. And then uh, he starts involving his, his sons in the business. Uh, he has five sons and, and he, he shows them, gets them involved in the business relatively early on. And a few years in, into it, uh, the founder, Mohanlal Chohan, retires um, and his children start to take over the business, focusing on, on their strengths. Uh, the company transitions from making these sweets into making glucose biscuits. Uh, at the time, you know, this is during World War II, they could only make these biscuits for the military. Uh, and, and, and so they, they initially wanted to make a, a, a lower cost but but tasty alternative to, to the British biscuits that are, out, that are out there. So they started doing this. And then eventually when India became independent, uh, that's when Pale could really uh, shine and, and sell their biscuit to the masses. Uh, and, and so they, they went out and, and, and you know, marketed their, their brand as an alternative to British biscuits. And it did really well. And it started doing really well in India. Uh, but that sort of came with a drawback, right? As, as their brand grew and, and, and their biscuits became more and more famous, what happened was uh, people would go to stores and ask for glucose biscuits. Uh, and kind of realizing that this was an opportunity, some competitors started to creep in. Uh, Britannia in 1960 created their own glucose biscuit. Uh, and a lot of smaller players, you know, would create glucose biscuits. And someone would go to a store and just ask for glucose biscuits and it didn't matter whether it was Parley or some other brand. And so Parley obviously, you know, reacted to this and they tried to come up with creative marketing campaigns. They were one of the first companies to actually advertise on the Indian railways, uh, talk about the benefits of their biscuits. But what they eventually ended up doing was, was repositioning it. And rather than focusing on glucose, which had become sort of a generic brand, uh, they rebranded it to Parley G as we now know it. And, and at the same time, they, they had the strong belief in, in, in the power of marketing and, and branding. And, and that's something that they stuck to. Uh, they created that iconic image of the Pale girl that we all know, of course, and, uh, and the rest, as they say, was, was, was this hist history. But the other thing that was interesting with the family that's happening at the same time is, you know, they, they, they have five brothers that kind of taken over this business uh, and they've built this solid base, right? They've, they've, they've created a, a brand that people love that, that's associated with, with quality, but also uh, a fair price. And so they kind of expand from there and start to diversify in, into other products. Uh, the first one is Parley Agro, where they start making uh, fizzy drinks. Uh, they then you know, kind of continue to diversify their product portfolio and, and, and branch out on that solid base that they've built. And this is how the Parley company grew to the company that we know today. Uh, and, and with that, um, Abhinay, can you, can you tell us a bit more about th their journey over the last uh, few years? Yeah, great. So what started, you know, in around 1928, uh, very soon, they have grown, they have found a product which was, you know, working really well for them. They have found multiple other products, as Marjin uh, mentioned, right? By around 1980s is the time when they found that Parley G or the Parley Gluco Biscuit, which was earlier known as Parley Gluco Biscuit, uh, was the main hero product that they had. And also in the market around 1980s, they saw, they saw so many things happening in this biscuit market, right? So they decided to do a rebranding exercise, okay? Now, uh, in that period, 1980, 
um it was very difficult they they were serving to the masses people are not literate enough they, it was a very difficult mar uh, market as well right now very competitive there are so many people who are just playing on margins or the cost right uh, on the pricing part so what they did was they did a rebranding in which two couple of things they did really well one was they changed they brought in the face the 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 little girl that we see on on uh, palaji packaging face they bring bring in that mascot to strengthen their brand right so it was very easy even for a layman to identify this is palaji biscuit and then the, at the same time to understand to make it more from a category to a brand they move from palaji gluco gluco to palaji and which is what we know uh, you know right uh, that's the memory we have uh, from our childhood as well on the other side they they started investing in building a brand uh, they launched their first tvc era in in 80s in which they 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 had this one grandfather uh, playing with uh, his his grandkids and talking about two functional aspect of uh, parle ji uh, which was around uh, you know uh, around energy at the, as well as taste right swad swad bhi shakti bhi something on those lines that they started with uh, on the functional part very soon the sale was growing uh, they kept improving on their packaging as well sale was growing on the other side as as marjin mentioned there was other unit which was parley bislery right here uh, around 1977 due to uh, due to uh, change in government uh, coca cola was banned in india so they got an opportunity they started a a cold drink division in which uh, you know we all these old brands cold spot uh, thumbs up uh, which is part of uh, coca cola now all those brands were sold and it was re doing really good uh, till 91 so for nine when 91 happened right uh, india open up to the world what happened was for for parley bislery division bislery was, which is also a brand that they have uh, you know uh, they have they have bought uh, bought from a from an italian uh, businessman uh, now what was happening was this division faced severe competition when pepsi and coca cola entered again in india around early 90s so then it was a difficult part a uh, difficult situation and they decided to focus on bislery and they sold off the uh, rest of the cold drink brands like gold spot thumbs up uh, to uh, uh, to uh, coca cola so that was one part but on the other side biscuit which was their you know key product uh, which is now part part of parley product uh, that was doing really really well and they kept pushing the sales they kept innovating on the branding part when the when they saw that india was becoming becoming more aspirational now it was important for them to move from functional messaging to an emotional messaging they saw that mothers wanted their kids to become the next engineer or the doctor they changed that you know parle ji 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 mane genius right they started showing how how it it helps to uh, achieve whatever india wants to achieve right so that's that's what they kept doing which is very difficult to execute at the at the you know when when you look at the the way things change the way customers evolve also what they did really well was they understood their customers and the price point really well they understood that you know this is a very price sensitive market there is competition from multi multinational there is competition from national brand like multinational big britannia etc right now there is a competition from cremica uh, which is a national brand also there are local labels cheap imitation which which you know just play on the price if you price 5 rupees they'll price 4 rupees that such type of uh, competition exists in market so to to ensure that you know uh, they are very competitive in market they do not lose on volumes they ensure the pricing remains constant for almost 15 years that they did by innovate innovating on the size packet size weight of the biscuit but not passing on the input cost directly to uh, customers though uh, like like the strategy has been around cold drinks right uh, reducing the size that the similar strategy they used and that helped them grow parle ji over years there was, there are a couple of hiccups as well not only the cost margin pressure at the same time it's a family business third generation by 2006 or 7 right so there are obviously um, challenges in the uh, in the vent uh, in the in the streams that these people can enter or not enter 2007 there were minor differences between the family uh, on on you know when one division started uh, something around confectionery space which was not allowed as such so there are some hiccups there as well but growth for parle biscuit or parle bislery these have been iconic brand and kept growing in fact a uh, parle g biscuit crossed 5000 crore worth of sales which was which which is huge in itself and was more than some of the fmcg brands of that time put together right or all all products put together so they they reached around 5000 crore of sales in 2013 and all they could do 
by really executing and understanding the market and their customer really well that you know what we can do with pricing what we can do with packaging packaging they were not innovating so much that you know but at the same time it was very functional it it was it was delivering the message in the right way on the branding part they ensured that if tv is the growing channel they ensured that they leverage the tv uh, tv as a channel so those are the things that they did really well and th that's how they have been able to create such, such iconic brands like parley ji bisleri uh, and many other that that we know thanks i mean apart uh, maybe now you can tell us a bit more about uh, parley in in more recent times and and what the future holds uh, for the company sure um so um before we jump into that as in just understand about india's demographics as in india's consumption market and how big is the market and where uh, the parlays and overall entity stands so if you just look at uh, the india's uh, uh, population so india is uh, the population is still growing uh, however the per capita income is still low uh, so if you compare uh, india with let's say other um, countries with similar gdp uh, for example japan germany uk so with much with with lesser population they have much higher per capita gdp now the consumption is directly proportional to the population and per capita gdp so this one one part which is there with india is basically the population now if the per capita income increases the consumption will definitely increase now india is actually in a sweet spot um so india's per capita gdp uh, is close to around 2000 dollars now uh as per the historical data uh, uh, when we also understand about the other countries like china etc so if that cross that particular barrier the consumption boom generally happens and that's where the parlay is also in a sweet spot then with the kind of products and with kind of brands they have um, so parlay products uh, uh, basically parlay g or crack jack or 2020 when we talk about parlay agro another uh, uh, company Uh, from the same same house of fizz or bailey or appy and also we have a bisleri so <clears throat> all these three companies are in a sweet spot in their respective categories they also have a uh, they, they also face competition from let's say britannia or itc or couple of other uh, regional players uh, on the other side um, parle agro and parle bisleri are also facing competition from pepsi and coca cola so that's that's that that will still happen um however when we look at the overall biscuit category and the other categories parle is still have like 25% of the market share uh, and that's still growing same is the case with parle agro uh, which is one of the category leaders in the mango based uh, drink market it's still at still like uh, 30% of the 40% of the market share or like 5000 crore overall market share um so one thing which which this group has focused on is basically uh, generate cash which the this is a lot of the startups are missing these days in this in this uh, fmcg category or um, uh, in 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 the consumption market uh, same is the case with bisleri which had let's say 60% of the market um, of like 3000 crore package drinking market share a uh, uh, package drinking uh, water market now if we if we if we if we look at uh, margins so obviously uh, the parle group uh, or the parle products uh, if you just talk about it um, they have always always focused on economies of scale and they have never uh, never uh, focused on uh, uh, premiumization of the products and that's why they have a lot of market share but that obviously has affected their margins so the margin has declined to like 4% for the 8% a decade ago so obviously because because they they heavily focused on uh, the volume obviously the margins affected but that does not mean that um, that pa that the overall valuation though all the companies uh, are still private none of these companies are listed on the markets uh, they they still have a premium valuation so if you just uh, apply a price to earning ratio of let's say 50x then the parley product itself will command a valuation of 25 to 30000 crores combined group valuation will command a market uh, total valuation if all of these three companies were listed uh, to the tune of 40 to 50000 crores and that's not less now if you just talk about how they will how the entire scenario will happen or will play out in future so 
just just think of this particular scenario in the covid times in the covid times lot of this uh, migrants were moving from one place to another in india the brand which they relied on and that was one of the big kicker for parle uh, especially parle ji um, everyone relied on parle ji for their uh, for their immediate food needs and itself in, in one particular year uh, during that covid period their net sales increased by 38% and in that particular year uh, the overall groups uh, overall parle products revenue increased to like 13000 crores which was higher than britannia nestle uh, it also helped parle products to become india's biggest food company by annual revenue in that particular year um, parle ji only that biscuit brand became the second highest fmcg brand to cross the annual sales of 1 billion dollar in that particular year that also allowed uh, parle ji to expand its margins uh, from 4% to 9% and then still continues uh, in that particular trajectory so if if we just if we just look at the future if we just look at the brand positioning uh, and if we just look at the overall uh, india's consumption market which will probably Uh, hit like four trillion dollars in the next five to seven years. Uh, this one particular company is in the sweet spot. The entire group's net worth could be around one uh, lakh crore, and the kind of categories they are operating in, and kind of the brand they have established, uh, uh, Parleji can be the next uh, next thing to watch out for, at least in the consumption FMCG space. Thanks, Parth and Abhinay for joining me. Uh, certainly, was a very, very interesting story. Uh, loved reading and learning about Pali. Hope you guys did too. Uh, do join us again next week. Thank you.